Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is FAT, Factory Acceptance Testing. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get all the good content we're putting out. Check out the status bar below for an outline of our agenda. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video to get those bonus questions. Our topic, Factory Acceptance Testing, is normally captured within the process validation requirements from 820 and 1345. Factory acceptance testing in five words. Supplier site equipment functional testing. For very complex pieces of equipment or custom pieces of equipment, sometimes we can do functional testing at the supplier site before they send the equipment to us. This is commonly referred to as FAT, or Factory Acceptance Testing. When we have the need to do an FAT, we need to have a pre-approved protocol that outlines all of our acceptance criteria and then write a report once the FAT is executed. The goal of the FAT is to uncover any failures or deviations in functionality before the supplier sends the equipment to our site. At that point, the supplier can review those failures, come up with corrective actions to fix those failures, and confirm that they are fixed before the equipment is shipped to our site. Keep in mind, if you find failures during an FAT and you allow the supplier to ship that equipment to you without correcting them, the supplier's motivation to address those failures and to help you solve them decreases dramatically. Make sure that all FAT activities are documented, the protocols and reports, and that they are included in the process validation package for that specific piece of equipment. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, if I do an FAT, a factory acceptance test, I have a pre-approved protocol, and then I have a summary report afterwards. Second, any deviations or failures found are corrected at the supplier's site before the equipment is sent to us. And then finally, all of the FAT documentation is captured and it's included in the validation package. How do I know it's not working? Well, first, for complex or custom pieces of equipment, I don't do an FAT. Second, if I don't have an FAT protocol or an FAT report afterwards, or I'm just not keeping the documentation of my FAT. And then finally, if I do a factory acceptance test and there are deviations or failures, I ignore them or I allow the supplier to go ahead and ship it to me while they are working on defining fixes. And now for the three bonus questions. Does our process validation procedure cover the requirements of doing an FAT. Second, when would we do an FAT? Can you please explain when we would do an FAT? And then finally, what was the last piece of equipment that we purchased where we actually did an FAT? And can I see that validation file? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to QMS dot jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder for Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.